All right, welcome back to the channel. Um, I have a wedding on tomorrow, so I thought while I'm just hanging out in this hotel room, it'd be a pretty cool idea if I made another YouTube video because it's been a hot minute. Pretty straightforward. These are just the five accessories that I wish I bought sooner. You know, you often focus on camera bodies and lenses, and while lenses are probably the most important thing, um, a lot of accessories are overlooked. They're really the foundation that supports you in creating a specific vision. So some accessories give you more control over lighting. Some accessories give you just make your life easier. Some accessories are all about like changing the image or things that are kind of like secondary to the camera body and lenses, but are often overlooked. And I think they're really important, especially because they're often smaller accessories that fit in your bag really well. And some of these are gonna range from like super basic stuff all the way up to uh, more professional things that I rely on day to day when shooting weddings. All right, first up is a variable ND. So this is my little variable ND here. And I remember shooting on like an old DSLR and just cranking the shutter and never really being happy with the footage. But I obviously invested in variable NDs once I started shooting log because you kind of have to. Um, I'm not really going to promote a specific variable ND because there's so many great ones out there on the market, but what I'm really calling out specifically are these magnetic variable NDs. So this is an ND32 to ND2, and I really like it. It's nice and small. This is a 67 because it lives on my uh, 35G Master or my 50G Master, and it just attaches with a small little, uh, not like a step-up ring. I guess you'd call it an adapter ring or just a threaded ring but it allows me to just attach and then rotate till it locks in and then I've got my variable ND uh, on my lens and it allows me to rotate the variable ND without it um, slipping or sliding inside the filter thread so it's just really light and small let's see block that really small setup not a huge footprint which I really enjoy um, you just have to be careful with some of them that have a free rotating ring as sometimes you can end up with an X pattern across your image where it makes like an X but I've been really happy with this one. I have probably three or four variable NDs as I, I run a multi-camera setup when I'm shooting weddings. So I've got three bodies um, for most of the day and having three NDs is really important. It's not something that you invest in once and then just, oh, that's my ND and that's all you need. Absolutely love this little variable ND. Really, really nice one. This one was really cheap, cheap and nasty, but with the way I treat my gear when I'm at a wedding day, I don't want to be investing too much in things that I'm more likely to lose, break, or drop. Next up is another filter. This is the Moment Cine Bloom. So this is a 67, another 67 mil filter, but unlike the other mist filters on the market, this one diffuses the light, but also halates the highlights in your footage. So most mist filters will give you a smooth gradation from highlights to uh, shadows, but this thing specifically halates the highlights, which I really like. It's really fun to shoot. You can use it with stills too, but I mainly use it for video. I shoot nearly all my music videos with this, uh, with this filter on, and it just lives on the 20 mil that's on my FX30 right now. So I'll whack it on, but what we should see is the gradation from this side of frame should become a lot smoother and the light in the back left-hand corner, right-hand corner, left-hand corner, not sure, but it should halate a little bit. So I'm gonna whack it on and I'll let you have a look. And that's it right there. And you can see that the light is halating a lot now. It's not really changing the light on my face. It still looks pretty, pretty good to be honest. But the halation is really nice, particularly when you're dealing with fairy lights at weddings or uh, any kind of harsher lighting that's in a concentrated fine point. So the sun itself won't really halate too much because it's such a large light source. Uh, whereas this specifically is great for that kind of thing. And I love it. Uh, I wouldn't use it for all applications. I just think it's particularly good for low light shooting in particular because you're going to have a lot more of this separation of color. And I like that the way that it bleeds, not just halates, but it bleeds into the background. So on a music video I shot with Ethan, I used this filter nonstop because we could use Nan Light Parbo tubes and we can put those tubes on the corner of frame and have the light bleed in without actually having the physical light in the frame, which I thought was a really, really cool use of this filter. Next up is a third filter. I know I'm a bit filter crazy, but it provides a lot of variety for my images so I don't have to invest in 
more and more glass, more and more lights. Uh, it just gives me a really accurate and easy control over my image without having to uh, plan too far ahead and lug too much gear around. So this is the Nizzy Blue Streak filter. I'm a really big fan of it, I'll just get it out now. So all it is, is a pretty basic diffusion filter, but with little blue streaks built into the lens itself. So it's these little tiny blue streaks, I don't know if you can see it, but these little blue streaks, and they're designed to split the light as it comes in. So you orientate the blue streaks vertically, it splits the light, and you'll end up with what, you, what looks like an anamorphic flare without me having to invest in really expensive anamorphic lenses. The only downside to this though is you do need to have only one strong light source in your scene. If you have more than one, you'll end up with multiple blue lines and it can get really distracting. So to put this on my 20 mil lens, I just have a 67 to 82 step up ring. So I'll just whack that on now and then I'll swap these two over and we'll have a look at how it looks. All right, so while it is a blue streak filter, it depends on the temperature of the light that's actually in the shot. So you can see here now I've got this anamorphic flare almost, but it's nice and orange, nice and warm, which is really good. Uh, it depends what you're using. I think in sunlight uh, or white light, it tends to go blue, but if you do have a very strong uh, orange temperatured light or a tungsten or something like that, it will, it will flare orange. Uh, the sunlight sometimes flares orange at sunset, which is really nice because Nissi do make a gold flare, a blue flare, and a neutral gray or silver flare version. But I found that this one can get the, all versions of that flare depending on the environment. So save your money, buy one of these things, and just hope that you can find the right scenario to use it. I'm gonna leave this on there because it looks fantastic. But the next, uh, the next accessory is an Aperture MC. These are really small little LED panel lights. I think that they're fantastic. They're super small, super easy to use. Um, they're full RGB, which is awesome. And they have a magnetic back, which means you can clip them on a fireplace, uh, on a roof, ceiling fan, uh, C-stand, anything like that. And I think that's really good because they're so small, you can connect them via the Citus Link app and control them remotely. And they come with a little diffusion thing here. So, whoa. Yeah, you can see that this uh, blue streak filter now is not quite working how we want it to work because the light is bleeding in too much of a large spread. But I still think it's very cool. It's just a, uh, basically a, two, a one button approach. It's got some effects, so you can do like paparazzi, uh, fireworks, faulty bulb, uh, TV, lightning, which I think is very cool. Party, pulsing, pop car fire and so on. There's a whole bunch in there. Um, and I've been using a lot of this a lot, not just for video, but also for product photography because it's so small and light and so powerful for the size that it actually is. Um, I use it a lot when getting like really close. If I was doing some, some product photos for say a, a new lens that I've just purchased, putting it really close to the, uh, the product is really easy. All right, the last accessory on my list is one that most people won't need, but as a wedding photographer, I think it's kind of essential. Um, I got sick of putting one camera down and swapping lenses and just shooting on a 24 to 70 because I do really like that shallow depth of field. I love shooting on my 35-1.4 and my 50-1.4. So I wanted the ability to you rock two bodies and not have to put things down every time. I've seen other brands of these and none of them are quite stylish. They're all like, uh, they're all like plasticky things or you can get those hip weird hip belt things where you can attach your lenses but none of them really look nice and they don't go with what I'm wearing and I think it and I think on a wedding day it's really important to kind of fit in as like one of the guests almost that way you don't stand out in other photos and footage if you are in the background so the harness that I use is this one here it's called the Koiro harness it's made of really nice leather but the main reason I like it so much is the fact that on the actual belt ties, like the toggle ties that attach to the camera itself, it has a backup or a redundant tie, which lets you clip into the, uh, the neck strap toggles on the side of the camera. And it just means that if this were to unscrew, I have a backup and I have a safety. And that's really important because no one wants to be dropping lenses on a wedding day. So yeah, this is my Koiro harness. I love it, it looks fantastic. My partner Evie loves it too. <laughs> um, and that's why I keep using it. All right, 
those are the five accessories I wish I'd bought sooner. Nothing fancy in this video, I just wanted to pump out another clip and get back into it.